Hello and welcome to another wonderful day in Lesotho. Today we're not in South Africa, it's a different country. And we're starting the day with an issue with the car. <laughs> not ours, but the cars continue to have small little issues and today it's the green car's turn. It is every day, but um, now we're in Lesotho and we're going to see the mountains. It's very beautiful mountain regions. They're not at all like the Alps. Um, and it's currently winter season, so everything looks very dry. But soon spring will come and the rains will come and then it will be flush, flush green. We're now in a national park of Lesotho. We're deep in the mountains, but unfortunately we can't really continue the journey because we wanted to get up to a river, but it's past the mountains and the cars are really struggling, not all of them, <laughs> the green ones specifically. Uh, so we've decided to turn around, uh, kind of fix the car a little bit and then turn around because otherwise it will get dark. But um, just look at this beautiful view we have. So the interesting thing about Lesotho is that unlike South Africa, this country, which is inside of South Africa, was never part of apartheid. So no white people ever lived here really and it is up until now a kingdom. So <laughs> unlike the bus that we saw in the last video, if you haven't seen that, go and watch that now, there were never buses with white and black separation. And I notice also that in this country, the people are especially amazed by these cars. Every person, pretty much every person, kids and older people also, um, wave and scream when they see these cars. So they really do appreciate the cars. We are trying to get over the border now, but we're still a little bit far off of it because we're going to a place in South Africa, which is supposed to be not too far away. It's called Clarence, a little city. Or not a city, like a little town, uh, which is where we're going to stay uh, at the hotel. But right now we're really fighting with the dirt roads of Lesotho because the roads are really not in the best condition. Um, but the sunset is nice. A few moments later. Okay, it's dark now. <laughs> we're still not past the border and we have to go through passport control. But apparently we're not too far away yet anymore and then we'll have to go through or to Clarence. The road is a bit better now, luckily. It's now an asphalt road again. But it's a bit dangerous, I have to say. We keep all of our doors locked and the windows because um, it's dark and people very quickly steal something from inside the car, especially things like cameras or phones. So we have to be very careful. But so far everything is fine and we're looking forward to the hotel and a nice dinner. The next morning. We've finally arrived at the hotel. It's now the next day. Everything was fine. No cars broke anymore. We did get lost big time. So we arrived only very late at night yesterday. But um, we're going to move again today and that is when I'm going to take the opportunity to finally tell you about each car a little bit. Now, just really quick about our car. We did have a small, tiny little accident yesterday. As you can see on our exhaust, we hit a bump with the exhaust and the welded piece 
well, the piece that was supposed to be welded now kind of broke off. So we're keeping the exhaust onto the bumper and we have to find somebody to weld it to fix it. But yeah, apart from that, everything's fine. No car is completely broken. We do have a couple of leaks and such, but that's going to be fixed. We were in Luck, the hotel that we're staying at, or that we were staying at this last night. They knew somebody that was able to weld the exhaust for us. So now we're perfectly ready for the road again. And we're going to drive just 20 kilometers to a place that's called Chiara Lodge, exactly my name. And then I'm going to introduce all of the cars to you. Just before we leave for Chiara Lodge, I was walking through the city through Clarence and I just saw these toys that are a big, big core memory of my youth of when I was a child because they are called, we call them Drahtkarre, which is uh, like wire cars and they just look like this and my dad used to cut the grass in pathways and I would just drive with them through the little paths as if I was driving a car but it was just it was so so cool and I can't believe that I see this again tell me in the comments if you've ever seen these before or maybe also have memories with them Lodge um, when the car in front of us, the blue car, got a puncture and we just stopped and checked it out and it's not really a puncture um, but really the inside of the tire had been rubbing against the, the, the wheel well and that is how over time the rubber got thinner and thinner and now it just bursted. So something is skew in inside the yeah, I don't know if it's the wheel well or the axle or something. We'll have to check that out once we're at the lodge. But for now, we just put on the spare wheel and ready to go again. <laughs> Hello, it is now the next morning. We are at Chiara Lodge and now I can finally tell you a little bit about the cars that we have. So this one that is standing behind me is the one that we are driving. It is an Auto Union S1000 or 1000S and the 1000 stands for the engine size. Now it's actually a bit of a lie because it's exactly 981 cc and not a thousand, which means the car has 44 horsepower it's a four-speed manual and according to the owner of this car, the S only means that it has more trims compared to the 1000. But according to somebody else, it means it has slightly more horsepower than the non-S. But I couldn't find anything on the internet backing either of these two things up. So there's a 1000 and there's a 1000S and nobody really knows the difference. Now the version behind me, which is the yellow one, we've been driving this one. It has four doors, but the blue one has two doors, so it's a coupe. If you look at it more detailed, you can also see that the blue one has a wrapped around windscreen, unlike the yellow one, which has just one flat windscreen. 
This red DKW is the one that belongs to my grandfather and he is adamant about keeping the color this way. Most of you will have noticed by now that the paint does not look very good anymore and it has a couple of rust spots but he really does not want to kind of fix it or repaint it because it is the original color that it got back in I believe 1958 when it was first produced and that is why he says it is very special because it is fully original apart from spare parts of course that needed to be changed it is completely original and if we look now at the blue one which i mentioned before this car has been completely restored it has been repainted entirely to this beautiful baby blue color the top is white as it was originally all of the trims have been um, shined and polished and made perfectly new and also most of the rubber seals look nice and good if you compare them to the rubber seals from the red car they are very worn they, they've seen many years so they don't look that great anymore and they also lose their function a bit now um, this is a preference we see a lot with these um, kind of passionate DKW drivers there's those kind of guys that like to restore the car completely to make it look as it used to when it was original as we can see with the blue car and there's the people that want to keep them the way they were and just let them wear and tear because they think it's too special to um, change that originality. DKW also did develop these station wagons that are very much longer. What that did is the cars do apparently have a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit less power and a tiny, smaller, a tiny bit smaller engine. By how much I don't know exactly, but it's definitely still somewhere around 900 cc. These engines are all two-stroke, meaning that as you fill up the petrol, you also have to add oil. For that reason, the engines are very simple. Two-stroke versus four-stroke is very simplified, and this also means that things don't really break as easily or as often simply because there are way less parts to break. The two station wagons we have here are pretty much the same except they were in two different, built in two different years. The green one uh, was built I believe a little bit earlier and it's supposed to have the same grill as the one, the yellow one. However, um, the owner changed the grill so it does not have the grill it's supposed to have but you can see which which exact models of which model year it was built in depending on which grill these cars have. The green one that we're looking at right now, that is the car that has been giving us most trouble on the road. Although the blue one has been giving us a lot of trouble as well, not really a lot, but yesterday it started doing some funky stuff. You did see that part about having to change the wheels and then we realized that it was rubbing against the inner side of the wheel base. Well, we found out that is because the axle has shifted towards the right, um, meaning the right wheel sticks out and the left wheel is sticking too far in to the wheel base. And now what happened is that these springs or the suspension... It's upside down, look! <laughs> So basically the suspension has these plates and they are kept together by one pin in the middle. What happened is that pin somehow fell out or got lost or whatever and now all of these plates shifted and with that the entire axle. So what the boys did is they just kind of tried to yeet it back into its original position but they couldn't quite get the pin or the bolt that they were now using through that hole that is in all of the plates because they couldn't shift all of the plates. But they did get it through, I think, the first two, which are the main, the, the most important ones. So now it's the axle is somewhat in the middle again. So the wheel should no longer be rubbing. At least until we get back home, we should be fine. Now we're going for a hike. So we will see the beautiful scenery. Maybe we'll fly with the drone and you will see some nice shots. And that is all. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.